Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video's channel and today we have a look into security and safety with frontend frameworks. Let's go. Mostly when web developers start an application nowadays, we don't use things like the LAMP stack and good old times. No, we use a modern framework, mostly Vue, React, Svelte, Angular, Solid, you name it, right? And often also a meta framework like Next, Nuxt, Svelte, Git, Solid, Start, and so on, so on. But that actually leaves us with quite some things that we usually don't consider. Because now that we write lots of code on the client side, that also means everything is human readable. And that could lead to things leaking that we might not necessarily leak. So let's have a look on how to make our applications a bit, let's say, safer um, to avoid that people see some content they shouldn't see uh, or hack their way into it. By just hacking to our own application, then have a look on other sites and other frameworks. And our first simple application is just an app on a localhost build with Nuxt.js. And it's pretty simple. We have that application here. And if we go to slash secret, then we get a 500 error saying, okay, it's a secret man, right? With a little typo. So here it's easier to find. So what we can do here is, okay, we want to see the content of that secret route, right? If we refresh here, that won't help. If we check the HTML, okay, that's just the error page. So nothing there. Um, we, we don't see anything about that. But luckily there are ways into that. So first let's go back here. The first thing I would try is probably do some client side routing. So let's say, okay, let's get our Nuxt app here. If you don't, if you've never seen use Nuxt app, then definitely check out the video on that, that I made earlier. And we push now to slash secret to see if it's maybe only a server only block could happen. And if you push, then we see, ah, no. Okay. The author here did a good job. Um, we can't also just access it on the client side, but here the interesting part comes because we technically could access it on client side. It's just something on the client side telling us, uh, 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 there's no way in. We can work around this because all the JavaScript is of course human readable and editable right away in the JavaScript console or setting debuggers or also in the dev tools by just overriding things or uploading files as overrides. So let's get going and uh, see if we can take a look at the secret content. The first thing from there is, okay, we want to get to slash secret. So maybe we should just find out where the root is used. So we have that wonderful debugger here. And we also have all the content available, all the JavaScript that's loaded, right? So what we can do is in our search, we just search, let me quickly close these here for secret. And then we see, okay, we see our code that we just pushed right away. Uh, but we also see, oh yeah, okay, interesting. There is this weird component. If we beautify the whole file, we see, all right, name secret, great, path secret, also good. And then we have that component over here. So with this weird file name, and as we are right away in uh, this b-q9xz1v.js file, if we hover over it, we see it's an underscore nux. So even if you don't know the framework at all, now we know, okay, underscore nux. And then we can use that component name that's over here from the dynamic import. We open it and ta-da, that's the component code. And here we see this is some secret content. So some content that's part of the application apparently. We'll have a look at the source code in a second. But first, that's good. That's a really good step. But maybe we actually want to play around and see uh, what's actually happening because sifting through so source code like this, that can be some tedious thing, right? So maybe we just get access and avoid the middleware telling us, no, 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 you can't get in here uh, and see what's actually shown. And to do so, we use the good old debugger. Very important. First of all, we take a look at this file here again and we see, okay, all right, fine. There is something is going on with component. We might not be able to reach it. Let's have a look at the error message that we had before. So let's push again and it gives us this wonderful uh, error stack trace. We can go through that, but one thing that clearly pokes my eye is middleware over here. So there's some middleware apparently saying, oh yeah, here, throwing that error, secret man, whoever typed it wrong, right? So apparently we just have to avoid this and we can do that by, well, just setting a few debuggers like this, for example, uh, and seeing what's happening now. We refresh the page and hopefully everything run into one of these debuggers. So let's jump into that. Then we see, okay, yeah, that's in a line. And here we have this ng, right? ng with middleware, return, JD, and so on, so on. So what we can do now in our console, we have 
Now, NG may be available. If not, that's also not a problem that we might need to wait for a different debugger or try a little bit uh, different place, for example, after the whole NG is initialized and try it again. Because sometimes, of course, we are in different scope and different scenario. So now this should work better. And in our NG here, we can also jump in a bit deeper. Perfect. In our NG, we have this middleware function, which apparently throws that error. So why not just saying ng.middleware, yeah, we can mutate that, of course, is a no-op, right? Or just saying return true if you want to. So, okay, we can do this, apparently. Save it. And now, very important, the only thing we shouldn't do now is refresh, because obviously we just changed the JavaScript. So all the JavaScript changes don't work on the server, only on the client. So now we have to do the client-side navigation again and see if we get in or not. And of course, to do that, we use the same trick we did before for our use Nuxt app router push. And if we do that, ta-da, we're in. Perfect. Of course, if there's more interactivity, it's even more interesting, right, than just this simple h1 here. But nevertheless, you get the idea. And if you look at the code now, then we see it's a pretty simple application. We have our Nuxt config over here. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of dark mode, Nuxt 4 compat. And then we have that index page and our secret. And here you see, okay, we have this define page meta. We have our middleware and saying, okay, we return a board navigation over there. And then with some secret content. So even if we don't even access the whole page, we could still get the secret content out somehow, right? Just because it's baked into your component. And that's not too uncommon. Before we come to some best practices and how to avoid that, we want to look into some other applications out there and frameworks and see what we can find out. For example, a very common thing is routes, right? And if you have the routes, then you can poke around further and further. And let's see how we can find the routes for certain applications. And of course, we start with our very own application that we just built because it's not too tricky. We can use, use Nuxt up again. We have the router already. And then we see, okay, what is there? Oh, get routes. So we just call it and we get the routes here. From there, we know what exists. We can try out certain things, load the JavaScript files related and so on and so on. But of course, Nuxt is not the only framework that's vulnerable, quote unquote, for attack. Let's try another example, which is the Sonos website. That's, by the way, built with Next.js. So if we open over here, we see the Next data. So clearly Next.js. And what we can do here is we can take a look at the window. And usually window has lots of things. In this case, the first thing comes to our mind is the build manifest, which is always a good indicator for routes. So if we take a look at window.underscore build manifest, we see rewrites, we see 404s, 500s, and the related chunks to that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but we also have apparently a sorted pages array. So let's have a look at this real quick. Uh, dot sorted pages. And here we get, well, all the pages are sorted. Perfect. But this one is even better because we have a direct uh, combination, which chunks are loaded on which page. Lovely. Then we also see like internal status, for example, is a thing. We probably can't access that straight away, but nevertheless, it's good that it exists. And of course, from here, we could then continue and continue. And another example of the Svelte kit is the Syntax website over here. Lovely podcast, by the way, shout out there. Um, and what we can check here is, well, we have the debugger up. We can just say like, okay, let's search for routes, which I already did here, and poke a bit around what's happening. And of course, at some point, people loop over routes in these applications. So if we refresh the whole site, of course, at some point we might hit the breakpoint with, reg with regards to the routes. And then we can just say like, okay, let's have a look into these. And if we now open the routes here in the console, which stops right at that point, we see all the routes available. For example, admin cache, admin transcripts, the admin login as well. And lots of them are of course also public, but still, it's a, a good way to get familiar with a site you might not be available with. Nevertheless, it's a good way to get to know a site that you're not built yourself, but just like reverse engineer it a little bit. And of course, if we now go just for example, uh, to like slash admin videos, then of course we will hit the debugger again, but uh, we see the login and it won't be that easy to log in here, right? Nevertheless, we could check the JavaScript file and see maybe what forms they have, what settings and so on and so on. But what does it mean to us? Well, eventually it means that everything you write into your components, it's searchable, it's human readable, it's available, and you have to consider that people see that. But the syntax side is a very good example. You can't do anything without logging in. So the important data for the shows, uh, the admin stuff, that's only pulled from an API after logging in. 
And here's the key. If there's anything you really don't want people to find unless they have a certain role or they're locked in and so on and so on, don't write into your components. Make sure you write that only in your API and you do a request. That can be simple text, but also, of course, more complex scenarios. So build your components basic and then feed them with titles, labels, props, and so on and so on. Because if there's really something that shouldn't leak out, quote unquote, that's the way to go. Everything behind an API, well, it's only coming from the server. And if the API checks for authentication, you're not authenticated or not having the right role, that's your way to go. So the big TLDR, everything on the client can be changed, manipulated, read, and adapted. You can even just take a few little boxes and make yourself an admin on the side. But of course, if your API for the content does not receive authentication tokens, it will tell you, yeah, nice try, man, but you don't get any content anyway. So they can only really see what's going on on your side and not the content coming from your API. So please make sure you also secure the API properly and test that so nobody will get the actual content. And yeah, let me know which sites did you take a look at and uh, maybe found some interesting things nobody uh, seen before. Write in the comment, uh, let me know what you think about it and uh, hopefully see you in one of the older videos or the next video. Definitely also check out our podcast uh, about uh, view called Deja View on DejaView.fm, also here on YouTube. And um, then I hope to see you in the next video. Stay cool and uh, happy hacking.